Welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. We are on block number eight of our 2023 Sew With Me series. If you're new to our sew along, we are sewing one quilt block every month. We started back in January and we are on block number eight today, but you can still join in. These videos will always be available. So head back over to block number one video. I do have a 2023 Sew With Me series playlist here on my channel. So you can just click playlist, find the one you want and just start right back at block number one. It does have all of the information for this entire sew along. So if you missed any of that, you can also go back and watch the beginning of that video. It has all of the information hopefully that you're going to need for this sew along. So let's go ahead and take a look at block number eight. This is maybe one of my favorite blocks. I have a lot of favorite blocks, but this one I was really excited to get to because it is so fun. It's got these cute little star points and then sort of an Irish chain thing going on here in the middle. And this would be a beautiful quilt with just this one block. You can make a whole quilt with this. And I think the um, secondary pattern and the Irish chain that you would get from it would be adorable. As a matter of fact, I'm really considering doing a biggie block in this, maybe like a 16 inch block or an 18 inch block and doing an entire quilt of it, out of it. So make sure you're following me on Instagram because if I do something like that, I'll definitely post that over there. But here is our Christmas block, our six and a half inch block. And here is our red and white version. This is the block we are going to be making today. I'm going to be pressing some of these seams open. I'm also going to be spinning the centers of those four patch units. So I am have a few tips and tricks to help you with that. So hopefully you're gonna be learning something new in today's video. Let's go ahead and dive right into today's tutorial. So here is our block. Don't forget to download your PDF with all of the instructions. I'm gonna set mine aside. We're gonna set our mini block aside and we're gonna get started sewing. So here are the pieces you're gonna need. You're gonna need some background squares. And then I chose three different fun reds. Again, all of these measurements will be in the PDF download that is below this video. You can also always stop by my blog at confessionsofahomeschooler.com and just search 2023 Sew With Me and you'll find all of the blocks there. I'm going to set my board aside. So we're gonna start off with our B squares and our A squares. We're gonna take one B rectangle. Sorry, I think I just said square, it's a rectangle. And one A square. And we're gonna sew from corner to corner. And then when we trim it and flip it up, we're gonna have this cute little point on this side. So once that's done, and we'll just kind of press that out of the way. We're gonna do the same thing down here. We're gonna sew in the same diagonal direction. So when we press this down, that's what's gonna give us one half of our arrow shape. Now, you can draw a line on the wrong side of all of your A squares, or you can use the quarter inch seam tape, which is what I'm gonna use. I'm sure you've seen it already on my machine several times, and I'm just gonna go with this so that I don't have to draw lines on the back of all of my A squares. So I'm just placing my corner right here on my red line. This red line is where my needle is, and I'm also placing the other corner right up here against my needle. I take a couple of stitches and then that way I can align this where I need it. I'm just gonna make sure that stays lined up all the way down. And now I can grab another one and just continue on. Okay, so here are the start to our left sides and we have chosen to sew from the top to the bottom right and when we press our piece back, we've got this diagonal right here. Now we just need to trim off one quarter of an inch away from our stitch line and I just will stack them up and do two at a time just to save some time. This doesn't need to be totally accurate because this is in our seam. And now we can take these and press these and I'm gonna go ahead and press my left sides to the white. When I do my right sides, I'm gonna press them towards the red and then they're gonna nest when we sew them together. But let's go ahead and press these and we're gonna take them back to our machine and we're gonna sew this next side. Now,
Now one little trick I thought I would show you is sometimes I will line this seam up and then I'll grab my longer ruler and just line all of those up. Make sure that you're not gonna trim off too much. I'm putting my points at my quarter inch mark. And I have one more. And voila, all trimmed at one time. And then now again, we're pressing these units to the white. So, whoops. So I can just press those really fast. So you can do what I'm doing where you press this one to the white and these other and the right sides to the dark and those seams will nest really nicely for you. But as I looked at this, I believe I pressed all of these seams open and I think I'm going to go ahead and do that on these as well. So if you've never pressed open, I always press to one side first and then you can go back through and press them open. And sometimes when you're pressing seams open, I don't feel like they stay quite as well. So a lot of times I will hold my iron just a tad bit longer and I'll put a tailor's clapper on there as well so that it can cool and those seams will lay nice and flat. All right, so here we have all of our left side pieces and we're gonna set those aside and now we need to make the right side. So we have our remaining B and A squares and now we just need to make sure we're going in the opposite direction so we don't wanna sew this same diagonal that we did over here, we wanna sew opposite diagonals. And so I'm going to take my piece and I will usually, I don't know if you can see, but I've already folded it just slightly so that I know that I'm going the right way when I get over to my sewing machine. And then we'll go ahead and just make four more identical pieces for the right side. All right, here are our right pieces and our left pieces, and then now we just need to sew those together. And um, before you do that, a lot of times I will just double check my sizing and make sure if I look like I have anything a little bit wonky and just make sure that they're nice and accurate. So I'll just do a quick trim. And I really only do that on pieces where it looks like I might have a bit sticking out. Um, if it looks pretty good, then I'll just trim it afterward. So now we're gonna take these two pieces, we're gonna flip them right sides together, and then I will usually stick a pin right where these seams intersect so that I can make sure that I'm keeping those points. The pins also sometimes help me remember which side I'm sewing on. And now we can take these to our machine and just sew right down this edge using a quarter, one quarter inch seam. And I'm gonna do that to all of these, so I'm just gonna put everything over at my machine and sew them all at once. On these points, the main thing you're gonna see is right here and right here. So if, you, you know, if you're off a little bit at the top, it's not as big of a deal. You wanna just do your best to get your, these points to line up. And now we can press these to one side and then press these open as well. It's totally optional, but I found for this particular block, it was better to press these seams open all the way around just because there's so many points coming together right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on all these and then I'll meet you right back here. So our point units are basically done. The last step is just to square them up and these should be squared up to four and a half inches. And if you're off just a little bit, don't worry about it. You're, you can kind of hide that in your seam allowance. You just want to make sure that they're um, all squared up and ready to go. Here we go. 
Here's my one that got a little wonky down there, so I just want to get that off so that when I'm sewing them all together, they're as straight as possible. So here we are, we have all four of our point units done, and we can set those aside, and now we're ready to work on our corner square units right here. So these four units. And I have done this in previous videos, but I am gonna show you how to spin the centers of those just to help make that center join even flatter and just really distribute some of that bulk of your fabric. So we're gonna have the rest of our A squares and our C squares. And we just need to make four patch units. So these are so easy and we've done this already before. If you've done previous Sew With Me videos, but we're going to sew the top two together, the bottom two together, and then sew both rows together. And while I'm pressing this, in order to spin those seams, we're gonna be pressing towards the darker fabric. You have to have your seams nesting like that in order to do that spin. And I'll show you that as we get to that step, but let's take all of our fabric over to our machine and get started sewing. Okay, here's my whole strip. I just chain pieced all of these and now I can cut them all apart. Chain piecing just makes it super fast and easy and then now we just need to press these all. And like I said, we're gonna press these all towards the red. That way when we put them together, our seams will nest and once we nest our seams, then we can spin those little center seams. It's a really fun trick and it makes for really nice seams where all four of those points come together. So here they all are. Now we're gonna take again all of this stack over to our sewing machine and we're going to sew these two rows together to create our four patch. So we just need to flip it over and right where these seams come together, this is that nesting. So you can, so you can see the bottom seam is going to the left and that top seam is going to the right like that. And then you can really just butt those seams right up next to each other and you can stick a pin in there while you're sewing or you can also just hold it with your fingers, which is what I do. Um, but if you're new, you might wanna stick some pins in there just to keep everything nice and straight. We're gonna take this over to our machine and just sew one quarter of an inch. And here we are. We can just now cut our units apart. And now comes the fun magic. So there is a tiny bit of stitches. There's about two or three stitches right here on the outside edge of your previous seam allowance. And we're just gonna pick out those stitches. And this is especially important if you've chain pieced like I have. If you haven't chain pieced, a lot of times you can just finger pull those apart and you don't even need to pick them out. But I'm gonna go ahead and just pick out those stitches right there. And let's see if we can get one to just pull on its own. We'll see. Well, we won't pick out this one and see how we do. So then you're gonna take your piece and you're gonna open it up and you're gonna follow the seams that you already have. So we've got this seam and this seam and you want all your seams going the same way, either counterclockwise or clockwise. These ones are going clockwise. And so I'm just going to keep them going that same way. So go to the right, go down to the left and up. And when we press up on those, and down on this one, we actually get this little mini, let me finger press it so you can see it better. We get a little mini four patch right there in the center. And then we can take this to our ironing board and just press this nice and flat. And what that does is it gives you a really nice accurate point right here in the center. It distributes the bulk of your fabric so you have a nice flat center seam right there. So we're gonna do that to all of them and I'll do it again just so you can see it. We want all our seams going in a row. So I usually just press my finger around and voila. And if you have one little stitch there in the center just still kind of hanging on, just grab your seam ripper and pull on it and just press it with your fingers and you're good to go. All right, let's do this other one and then we'll see if we can do that other one that I didn't use my seam picker on. And then here's the one we didn't seem pick. Sometimes they come apart, sometimes they don't. Look at, there you go. See, didn't even seam pick that one. There's still one little thread in there, but hanging on. 
make sure you don't pick past your stitch line. Just pick out the couple that are holding this centered together. And now we can just go ahead and press these. All right, here are our pressed pieces. And look how nice that looks on the back right there. We have that adorable little mini four patch in the center and that has just distributed evenly all of the bulk that was in the center of our four patch. Okay, now we just need to grab our D square, our center square and assemble our block. And by the way, you may want to just take a quick minute before you assemble this and just make sure that these are four and a half inches. They should be pretty good. If they're not, just trim them up. Those all look pretty good. Okay, so now we just need to assemble our blocks. So I'm going to start with my center and just place all of my star points so they're pointing down toward the center. And then we can take our corner pieces and place them. And just make sure that your reds are touching your reds. Um, if you do it like this, you will get definitely a different look. So that might be kind of fun to play with. You could, I guess, change these as well. So this block can actually have a few different looks just based on your fabric placement. And of course you can always completely swap out the background and the print fabrics and have an even different look. So if you like one of these blocks, you could make an entire quilt out of it, just rearranging the pieces and you'd have something definitely unique. So now we just need to sew our rows together. So we'll sew our top, middle, bottom row together and then sew those rows together and we will be done with our block. These two seams right here should meet up pretty good if everything's fairly accurate. When you pull that back, you should be able to see right here that those seams are gonna match up. If you're worried or one of your blocks is a little bit wonky, you can stick a pin just right there and into your bottom block and then just hold that in place so when you get to your machine, you'll know that those points will line up. So here's our block of chain piece. Now we just need to, need to decide which way to press. And so for this particular block and on this one, I ended up pressing these towards the center and these out because it just gave me a little bit um, less bulk where these seams meet up. But you could also press those seams open. So totally up to you. All right, and now we just need to sew all of our rows together. And I just leave mine chain piece together, so I'm not gonna cut these little threads in between, but I am going to stick pins right here where these corners meet up, where these seams meet up, just so that I can keep the center of my block nice and accurate. So we'll sew this edge, and then I'll come back and add this one. just need to trim it. Again, I'm going to try and make sure that I have a quarter of an inch of background fabric on all of those corners. And even if it doesn't look like it needs to be trimmed, I'll still go ahead and trim it just to get rid of these little extra strings. And here is our finished block number eight. Here's our mini Christmas version. I think they both turned out great. So that's it for block number eight. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are sewing along with us, make sure to share your progress on social media using hashtag 2023 sew with me. That way I can see all of your fun color combos and I love seeing your progress. And let me know below, are you planning on making this into a quilt? Are you gonna do something like smaller blocks and just do something small like a table runner or a table topper? Are you gonna combine them together? Or are you just waiting to see what I'm gonna do finishing wise before you make up your mind. I would love to hear all of that in the comments below. That's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next month for block number nine.